A typical computer system consists of a processing system, a memory system, and an input-output system with disk and other I.O. devices such as printer, scanner, keyboard, mouse, and so on. And the system memory space is broadly categorized into two areas, the kernel space and the user space. The kernel space is where we keep the kernel data structures and the kernel code and the user processes are kept in the user space. And each user process is allocated with its own private address space. Suppose we have now two active user processes, P1 and P2 in the system. Suppose the user process P1 is now in execution. The processor is allocated to P1 and P1 has started execution. Usually, the user processes begin their execution in user mode. Now, our process P1 is in user mode of execution. When the process is said to be in user mode of execution, it means the process is performing some task by accessing only the private address space allocated to it. When the process is in user mode, the process is not allowed to access the user space of any other process. It is not allowed to access the kernel space. It is not allowed to directly access the hardware resources such as disk, printer, keyboard, and so on. For that, the processor is allowed to execute only non-privileged instruction. So instructions can be privileged instructions and non-privileged instructions. When the process is in user mode of execution, the processor is not allowed to execute privileged instruction. So the process is in user mode of execution means the processor is performing non-privileged instructions and performing some task by accessing the private address space allocated to that process. Suppose now our process P1 need to access the kernel space or it need to access some I.O. device, say for example it need to access the disk or it need to print something with printer or it needs to receive something from keyboard or it needs to print something on monitor. Otherwise, suppose P1 was in user mode of execution and on the way it executed some invalid code. Say for example, it executed an invalid instruction such as division by zero or there was an invalid memory access. Otherwise, suppose P1 was in user mode of execution and earlier some task was given to the printer and printer completed its task while P1 was executing printer completed its task so it needed attention of CPU so printer raised an interrupt. So during P1's execution an interrupt received a hardware interrupt received from the IO device. In all these cases these situations cannot be handled by remaining in user mode because in user mode system is having less privileges, system is having restricted access. So to handle this situation, system should switch from user mode of execution to kernel mode. So why are we giving such separations? Why are we having two modes, user mode and kernel mode? Because the user processes are considered to be malicious and not given direct access to the operating system code and also the hardware resources. Whenever some need arises, the system switches from user mode of execution to kernel mode of execution. Then the kernel code executes on behalf of the user. This will separate the user from the kernel space and the hardware resources by ensuring protection and security. Once we switch to kernel mode, now the system has access to the kernel space, the kernel code and data structure. 
the IO devices are all the resources and the entire user space. For that, processor is allowed to execute not only non-privileged instructions but also privileged instructions. So when the system is in kernel mode of execution, processor can execute privileged as well as non-privileged instructions and there are no restrictions to the access. So here when P1 was in user mode of execution, interrupt, an interrupt is received from an IO device, so a hardware interrupt was received. Now the system will switch from user mode of execution to kernel mode of execution. Processor stops executing what it was already doing and processor will jump to the handler routine corresponding to that interrupt. Similarly here, P1 was in user mode of execution, in between suppose it executed some invalid instruction or some invalid code, then this will automatically create a trap to the kernel. As a result, the system will switch from user mode of execution to kernel mode of execution and the processor will execute a handler routine corresponding to it. An exception handler routine or kernel code in order to handle the situation. Now here, normally the processes are not allowed to access the hardware resources and kernel space and suppose the process needs to access some resource or the kernel space, then the process can request the service of the kernel. The request is made by using system calls. And these system calls are issued using instructions which generate the interrupt. Using instructions or using some code, we are able to generate the interrupt. So these are called software interrupt. So system calls are issued using software interrupt. When such an interrupt is received, it is identified to be a system call, then the system will switch from the user mode of execution to kernel mode of execution and processor jumps to the handler routine corresponding to that particular system call. And once these handler routines are completed, system switches back to user mode from kernel mode. Again, if need arises, it will switch back to kernel mode. So if we consider a single process execution itself, system often switches between the user mode and the kernel mode. Such dual mode of execution here we consider just two modes and two privilege levels but there can be multiple privilege levels and multiple modes based on it. To simplify we can consider this as two mode, dual mode of execution, user mode and kernel mode. When the system is in user mode of execution it means the processor is in non-privileged level and the processor is allowed to execute only non-privileged instructions. This is indicated by a particular mode bit within the CPU register. For example, if mode bit equals 1, system is in user mode of execution and processor is in non-privileged level. And when mode bit equals 0, it means the system is in kernel mode of execution and processor is in privileged level.